Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk about Acqua di Parma, my absolute favorite Italian niche brand. And specifically, I will cover all the fragrances from the Blue Mediterraneo line. As the name suggests, this line is dedicated to raw materials that you will find on the Italian Mediterranean coast. Currently, they offer eight fragrances from this line uh, and one is a limited edition one. So if you want to know all about the Blue Mediterranean line from Aqua di Parma, then please keep on watching. But before we start, if you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Noura and on this channel, I mostly talk about fragrances. So if you are a fragrance lover, then consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload a new video. Also follow me on Instagram where I post some exclusive content that I don't do here on YouTube. And without further ado, let's start. As I said, Acqua di Parma is one of my absolute favorite Italian niche brands and it, it has a very special place in my heart also because this was my introduction to the niche world. So my first niche fragrance uh, in my collection was an Aqua di Parma and it was from the Blue Mediterranean line. And what I mostly love about the Blue Mediterranean line, it's very natural smelling, very authentic, very Italian. And mostly this line is very summer appropriate, very simplistic, but yet complex very italian and it's very natural smelling and this is what i mostly like about it as i said we are going to talk about eight fragrances they are all an eau de toilette and are all unisex of course some will lean more masculine and some will lean more feminine so i decided to go through the fragrances from the most masculine one to the most feminine one so we have i have here my uh, aqua di parma bag here i have all my fragrances uh, all my samples um, let's say and i will start with the most masculine one from this collection and it's cipresso di toscana as the name suggests cipresso means cypress in italian and this is a cypress fragrance as all aqua di parmas has a very nice fresh opening but you will immediately get the cypress here you will also get the lavender which i find a very nice combination with the cypress you will also have some aromatic notes so um, you have rosemary which you can get there is also basil and sage but for me personally i mostly get the rosemary you will also get a little bit of the pine here. To me, this is a very uh, traditional men fragrance. So if you are a man and you love woody aromatic fragrances with lavender, so like a little bit fougere, uh, you will definitely like this one, especially if you like the note of cypress. To me, my skin, this had like a modernish longevity and sillage, so not bad for a fresh uh, eau de toilette, especially from this line. So if you love uh, cypress and you love woody aromatic fragrances, then definitely check Cipresso di Toscana. And by the way, the whole line, you will find a raw material and the name of the region. So Cipresso di Toscana is the Cyprus of Tuscany. And if you ever went to Tuscany, you will notice that they have a lot of Cypress trees actually there. So that was Cipresso di Toscana. Next on the masculine spectrum, uh, we have Chinotto di Liguria. And Chinotto di Liguria is all about Chinotto, which is actually a citrus fruit. I don't know if uh, it grows in other countries, but it is a main ingredient of the Chinotto beverage, which I think it's an exclusive to Italy. I never I never saw uh, Chinotto in any other country. Tell me in the comments down below if you know any country that uses this uh, citrus. When I first smelled this fragrance like way back, maybe two or three years ago, um, I thought this is very, very, very masculine. But now I don't find it so uh, masculine. It's still leaning masculine, don't get me wrong. But I personally can pull this one off. And this fragrance as a beverage is quite, at least for me, an acquired taste. When I first tasted this beverage, I was like, 
oh my god what is it it's quite bitter it's very unique and i would say the fragrance is also kind of an acquired taste so maybe if you smell it the first time you will think this smells strange but give it some time and try it uh, again and again and again i think eventually you will like it and somehow it gives me the same vibe not that they are similar fragrances it gives me the same vibe like boys from killian which has a coca-cola note um yeah but uh, imagine it's more bitter more herbal because it has also rosemary here the opening is very citrusy uh, but you will get also the rosemary uh, after a while you will start to get some of the floral notes um, personally i can't distinguish the notes but you will get this floral touch that comes from a jasmine and a geranium and then you will get a little bit of the patchouli uh, the other notes, to be completely honest, I don't get very much in this fragrance. Has kind of, uh, again, like Cipresso di Toscana, kind of a modernish longevity concierge. So if you want a very unique, fresh fragrance, then I would say go with Chinotto di Liguria. Ah, and by the way, Liguria is like the Italian Riviera, so uh, it's where Portofino is. Uh, Genoa, uh, Cinque Terre, all these famous places are in Liguria. So that was Chinotto di Liguria. Now, talking so much about Chinotto makes me really, really, really thirsty. This is my first Aqua di Parma and my first niche fragrance. Mm. This is a beautiful aromatic fresh fragrance it's all about the myrtle myrtle is like, i think in english myrtle uh, which is like an evergreen shrub that grows in the mediterranean area as all aqua di parma this has a very beautiful fresh citrus opening along with myrtle very refreshing i love this fragrance when it's really really hot and humid it immediately uh, refreshes me it has also a c note which i really don't get so much mostly for me this fragrance is all about the myrtle cedar and also juniper it's very very uh, naturalistic it smells like a mediterranean vegetation and i don't know if it's because of the name um, but Panarea is an island uh, near Sicily and when I smell this fragrance I immediately think about Sardinia. I never went to Panarea or Sardinia uh, but I don't know when I imagine Sardinia I imagine like the vegetation and everything smells like that this is one of the most naturalistic uh, fragrances from this line and this is why i absolutely love it again has a moderate uh, longevity and sillage and it's and the best thing about this fragrance it remains fresh till the end so if you want a very naturalistic uh, fresh aromatic fragrance then definitely check Mirto di Panarea. Now we are moving toward the like the middle of the unisex spectrum, and uh, my next pick is Bergamotto di Calabria. This is all about the bergamot, one of the absolute main ingredients in perfumery in general. And bergamot actually uh, is produced mainly in Calabria. So if you imagine Italy is like a boot, so you have uh, like where your toes are. I don't know how it's called. This is Calabria. And I think uh, I heard once that um, like most bergamot produced in the whole world, I may, I think it was they said 80 or 90 percent of bergamot comes from this region. Love, love, love the opening on this fragrance. Very fresh, very bergamotty, <laughs> if this is a word absolutely beautiful i actually did a full comparison between this one and the new 
a flanker, a bergamotto di Calabria La Spugnatura, which I will leave linked up here if you want to watch it, and also linked in the description down below. This is considered a woody aromatic, so don't be fooled by this beautiful opening because the dry down is quite woody and quite aromatic. You get a little bit of sharpness because there is also ginger, but as I said, the dry down is mostly about cedar, vetiver, um, so it leans more masculine towards the dry down. My problem with this fragrance is the weak longevity and sillage. I mean, this is really, really weak when it comes to uh, performance. I'm not like the biggest fan of the dry down and also the performance, so this is my least favorite from the line, but I know a lot of people I absolutely adore it and have it like a staple in their collection. Now let's move to the new flanker from Bergamotto di Calabria and as this is a La Spugnatura, this came out this year and it's a limited edition so it will be available only this year and let me tell you from the start this has nothing to do with the original <laughs> Bergamotto di Calabria except of the bergamot use but they are totally different fragrances it has kind of a, an aggressive sharp opening that makes me think that this is more masculine but in the dry down it gets more towards the unisex territory it's an overdose of bergamot and you will also get in the opening um, the grapefruit and a hint of fennel and in the dry down uh, you will get more of the orange and the mandarin orange and I think there is more to this fragrance than the declared one but again the um, particular thing about this fragrance is the way they extract the bergamot so La Spugnatura is uh, a reference to the way they e extract the bergamot oil if you want to know all about this method, then check my comparison video, which uh, um, again you will find in the description. And mainly the old method in extracting the bergamot oil brings all the facets out from uh, the bergamot. Maybe this is why it's quite uh, like the bergamot itself is very different here than in the original bergamot di Calabria. Uh, also, the good thing about this fragrance is that it has one of the best performances uh, in this line so it has a solid mm, uh, moderate longevity and sillage comes in a very very beautiful bottle uh, it's uh, handmade and it is porcelain and not glass i definitely recommend this one over the original Bergamotto di Calabria but uh, unfortunately it's a limited edition so sample it and if you like it buy it because it will not be available for a long time so that was bergamotto di calabria la spugnatura next uh, is fico di amalfi and now we are moving toward more feminine like slightly feminine leaning fragrance i think this is one of the most known fragrances um, like worldwide from aqua di parma and it's all about the figs from the Amalfi Coast. You really have to love figs <laughs> to love this fragrance. It, you immediately get the fig, but also the fig tree. So a little bit of um, green touch and the citrus. Uh, I am not a fan of green notes. And thankfully, after a while, this green uh, touch will mellow and you will get more of the fruit than the tree. Again, very refreshing and one of the best when it comes to longevity and sillage. Um, especially sillage. I think if you overspray this one, I think you can get a strong sillage. Again, very natural smelling. Not like the diptyque one, Philosophus. To me, Philosophus was too green. Yeah, natural smelling, but yeah, I didn't like it. To me, I like this one more. It's yeah, it's all about the fig, so you get the fig tree also. But there is a little bit of jasmine and benzoin that makes this fragrance more wearable. If you also like fragrances like uh, from the Maison Lancome private line, um, Figa Groom, I think it's called. Uh, I think you will love this one also. 
um, but this is more natural smelling than the Lancome one. If you want a wearable natural smelling fig fragrance, then definitely check Fico di Amalfi. Now let's move to my absolute favorite from this line, and this is Arancia di Capri. Love, love, love this. Mm, I love it. My absolute favorite orange fragrance. The opening is so refreshing, so beautiful. You will get in the opening a little bit of the oranges, but also pity grain. So as if you are smelling an orange with the twigs and the leaves, uh, it goes towards the dry down quite quickly. And in the dry down, you will get a ripe, sweet orange. So not so much the pity grain and the cardamom that are present in the opening, but you will get a very ripe, sweet orange. So we are moving toward more of like leaning feminine, although it's totally, this is totally unisex to me, but it leans a little bit feminine. The only issue with this fragrance is the longevity and sillage, so it has weak to moderate longevity and sillage but i still uh, love it i don't know if it's like the first one launched from the brand but this was released back in 1999 so quite an old fragrance but it's one of the best uh, does it really remind me of capri to me when i went to capri i thought it was more about the lemons although i did drink an orange uh, juice but I don't know i associate more capri with lemons but who cares the fragrance is absolutely beautiful so if you are like me and you love uh, orange fragrances then definitely check arancia di capri now let's move to the last fragrance and to me this is quite feminine and i am talking about mandorlo di sicilia and this fragrance is all about almonds this fragrance to me, is a little bit strange that it is in the Blue Mediterranean line. Yeah, I get Sicily and almonds, but it's not a fresh fragrance. It's more of a gourmand. A very sweet, powdery, almondy fragrance. The opening is a little bit boozy. Uh, to me, it smells like, uh, like the opening smells like um, an almond, uh, like an almond-based alcoholic beverage. If even something like that exists, I'm not an expert. The dry down, however, it smells like um, almond powder uh, mixed with, you know, uh, the vanilla that you buy in the supermarket that has um, like sugar in it mixed together. So I am not a gourmand lover, um, but I actually like this fragrance. It has a very intimate, comforting vibe to it. To me, this is not summer appropriate at all, although I know people wear this during the summer, but to me, it's too sweet, too cloying. It has a very good longevity, but the sillage is quite weak, which I actually appreciate because I actually use only three sprays from this fragrance and not more. Not because it's powerful, but because it's very sweet and warm that I don't want to feel like suffocating. I think what gives this fragrance kind of a unique touch that prevents it to be cloying is the Tolo Balsam. It's not like you really smell it, but it, it has a touch of a balsamic note in it which helps this fragrance to be not overly sweet it has also a floral touch but it's really a hint it's mostly about the almonds here so if you are a gourmand lover and you love almond fragrances then definitely check mandorlo di sicilia so that was it for uh, the blue mediterranean line from aqua di parma as you can see i'm a big fan i have as you saw two fragrances but i actually have two others that are still in their boxes which i will feature in an upcoming video i have the intention also to do 
uh, all the lines from Aqua di Parma, so uh, the yellow one, which is the Colonia, the black one, which is signatures of the sun, and also the nobile line, which has uh, the female fragrances. So tell me in the comments down below if you have any of the fragrances uh, that I talked about and what is your experience with them. I really hope you liked this video and you found it helpful and if you did please give it a thumb up, consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload a new video and I have quite exciting videos coming very soon on my channel. So make sure to hit that bell. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Ciao!